Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. Today's story is called Steady Buddy. Welcome to History of the Late Middle Ages. I'm Professor Elliot Sanders, and I have posted several articles on my website which you should have read to prepare for this class. First, class business. I assume that everybody found the papers by the door? Second, let's refer to the syllabus, he said. The first day of class, autumn semester, and Professor Sanders was as old and as crotchety as everybody said. An auditorium-style class with rows of seats on raised steps, all focused on the small stage in the center of the room. The room could easily sit a hundred students, and close to eighty left their seats to grab the papers. Not me. I had seen them as I came in. A lot of people grumbled as they took their seats. Have you seen the syllabus? It's five pages longer than any of my other classes, somebody near me whispered. A guy with dark rumpled hair and furrowed brows and a green with red trimmed soccer jersey that was a little too big. He rubbed his right shoulder. If I had to choose one word to describe him, it would be hunky. Nice shoulders, nicely defined arms, and my eyes couldn't help but wander to his chest. I nodded and hit a smile. This guy wasn't a couch junkie. What did he do to stay in shape? Did you know about the reading? I whispered and forced my eyes to look at a poster on the wall instead of the kissable pout on his lips. No, he said. Please look at the top of page one. My office hours and office phone are listed at the top, and underneath that are the two texts for this class, he said. Two texts? The online course catalog only said one. The other guy said loudly. Tell me your name, Professor Sanders said. Rugby Stout, he said. Rugby? That's unusual. My real name is Rigby, but when I started playing soccer, everybody started to call me Rugby, he said. Interesting. I like unusual names with stories behind them. First, Rugby, a point of order. Please raise your hand and wait for my convenience. That applies to all of you. Second, as you have your preference for a name, I have mine. You will refer to me either as Sir, Professor, or Professor Sanders. If you wish to get on my good side, then refer to me as Professor Sanders, sir, he said. Since you raised the issue about books, I'll refer to it, but only this once. I don't like that textbook. I feel it glosses over several important features, and I have found many mistakes, but my department chair will not budge in changing books, so I've added one that is better. We will be using both, as well as multiple articles found online to flesh out and give you a full background. Please note the web addresses on the last page. By the end of the semester, you will have read all of them. There must be a hundred of them, Rugby whispered to me. I glanced through the syllabus and felt my stomach drop. I had already bought the original textbook. It was heavy and easily had five hundred pages, not including appendixes, genealogical charts, or the index. I used my phone to find the other book on Amazon. Ouch! How could a book hold that many pages? And it cost double the other text? And that book wasn't cheap. Nobody was selling a used copy, and there wasn't a digital copy either. I wanted to swear. The syllabus called on daily reads from both books, plus Sanders, I mean Professor Sanders, sir, expected us to write a detailed essay every two weeks from topics he posted on his website. Add all the extra readings, and I bet it easily added up to another 500 pages from the websites alone. We had to master over 1,500 pages in 15 weeks and regurgitate it for the final Rugby's hand shot into the air. Thank you for showing proper respect, Rugby. Please continue with your question, Professor Sanders, sir, said. Professor Sanders, sir, according to this, you expect us to read 50 pages from each book by this Wednesday? Even if I ordered it today, it wouldn't be here by then, Rugby said. You should have referred to my website for the reading schedule last week and ordered the book early. 
I'm sorry, but you will have to find a way to study from each book, plus the first article on the last page of the synopsis, which I will refer to in a few minutes, he said. I have a job and a family to take care of and other responsibilities. What you're asking is impossible, Rugby said. I sympathize with you, for I also have a family and obligations. But I am not the one who set the schedule we have to keep, he said, with a slight frown on his face and a darkening disapproval in his tone. At the end of the semester, I would appreciate any questions and concerns you have about this course detailed in an online survey. I hope you are very vocal about it, but for now, there is little you or I can do. Any other concerns? I could drop the class, Rugby muttered. That is an option, and many students do, Professor Sanders, sir, said. I raised my hand and the professor nodded at me. Professor Sanders, sir, I've looked through the syllabus, sir, but I don't understand what we're graded on. According to this, there is weekly tests and bi-weekly essays, but they have no percentage assigned to them. The only thing with percentages are a midterm essay for 30% and a final for 70%. There is no class participation grade or attendance expectation, and nothing given for the weekly tests. Am I understanding this right? I said. That is correct. This class has only two relevant pieces of information for which I must formulate a grade, a paper and the final. Again, that is not my fault, but I have to follow the head of the department's set procedures. You don't have to show up, and if you do, you can sleep. You don't have to do the readings or the essays, Professor Sanders said. Technically, if you score high in the final, you'll pass with a C. I need a B at least. This is going to be hard, Rugby whispered to me. Rugby, I'm Lance, I said. Rugby leaned over and whispered, Nice to meet you. Did he look at me like the check out the guy sitting next to me kind of look? I hope Rugby stayed in the class. The class met Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for 90 minutes each day, and today was Monday of the first week. That meant 45 class sessions. I was getting nervous and digestion each time I scanned the synopsis, and just plain a little nervous when I looked at Rigby. More like nervous excitement. Maybe I could ask him out. But Rugby was right. How did Professor Sanders, sir, expect so much? The class ended. I had never been so tired of sitting in my life, and I couldn't wait to dash out of here. Welcome to hell, I said to Rugby. You want to team up and conquer the beast? I'll make you a deal. You help me survive, I'll help you survive. I made the mistake of looking at him. This man was prime and cut. He played soccer, so that's how he kept in shape. But there was something sad about his eyes. I think he noticed that my eyes kept traveling away from his face and down to his chest, but he didn't say anything. How about we get coffee an hour or so before class and compare notes, I said. No can do. I have to get my brothers off to school. What about evenings? Say six, Rugby said, packing his books and laptop into his bag. He paused a moment to rub his right shoulder. We could meet at the library, I asked. He hadn't said no, and I could be flexible. Would it be too much of an inconvenience if you came to my place? I have to get my brothers fed, and while they're playing video games, and before I get them to bed, we can study? Rugby kind of flinched when he said that and glanced at me as if it might be too much to hope for. You're the oldest, I asked. Oldest of four. Dad split a few years ago, and between Mom and me, we've kept the family together, he said, and slung his bag on his left shoulder. What's your mom do, I asked. Nighttime waitress and cashier at the Saguaro Diner from four until midnight, but it's more like one or two before she gets home, he said. It's just me most nights handling things. She's so tired in the morning, most of the time it's up to me to get the others off to school. How old are they? I asked. Rob is fifteen, Tal is twelve, and Ray is eight. I wonder if that's why he seems so sad. He always has to take care of his brothers. You're twenty-one? That's quite the age gap. Twenty-two. Ray was a surprise that Dad didn't like and didn't stick around for. Rugby said, and shyly glanced at me. I could really use the help. Let's swap phone numbers and give me your address and we'll start tonight, I said. A small grin snuck out before Rugby hit it. 
Tonight, then. Rugby lived in an older apartment complex, one that had seen better years a couple of decades ago. The air smelled of something spicy, and somewhere a man and a woman were fighting in a language I didn't recognize. Rugby lived on the first floor of a three-story complex. Whoever was next door had a wash line hanging up with wet clothes drying just outside their door. I knocked on Rugby's door. I've got it, a younger voice yelled. A second later, something tugged on the door and pulled it open. I'd guess it was the twelve-year-old. Rugby, your date's here, he yelled. Date? No, I'm Lent. I'm here to study, I said. The door whipped all the way open and Rugby stood there. Don't mind, Tal. Come in, we're just finishing eating. The apartment was a standard layout. Dining room, kitchen, and living room turned into one big room with a door leading to a half bath. A corridor led deeper in, with two doors on each side. I guess this was a three-bedroom apartment with a full bath and back. The couch was a worn, striped rectangle that didn't look very comfortable. The love seat was a vinyl yellow thing, and the coffee table still had some varnish on one side. Between college and rent and four boys, this family was barely scraping by. A couple of soccer balls sat by the couch, and an old 36-inch flat screen showed two teams playing early season football. There's plenty left over so you and my brother can have a nice romantic dinner, another guy said. The 15-year-old. At least it's lasagna this time. I'm so tired of spaghetti, the 12-year-old said. Guys, settle down. We're not dating. Lance, meet my brothers. Rob is the one who can't put his phone down. Tal is the one who answered the door. And Ray is... Ray, where did you go? Rugby yelled, rubbing his right shoulder. The television blared on in the other room and the sounds of some game system powering up. Just a minute, Rugby said and dashed to the other room. Ray, you have to finish eating before you can play. Come in, Lance. I'm the only one with manners, not like the caveman with the phone, Tal said, and closed the door behind me. Caveman with the phone? At least I have a girlfriend, Rob yelled. Is Tal short for something? I asked. Telluride, as in Telluride, Colorado. Everybody calls me Tal. Rob's real name is Rabanisco, and Ray is Raybolini. For some reason, Mom and Dad liked really weird names. Rugby is the only one of us that got kind of a normal name, Tal said. Do you have to tell him, dweeb? Lance, you might as well grab a plate, Rob said. I guess Rugby wanted to impress you because we haven't had lasagna for months. So you're the new boyfriend, Tal said. Guys, knock it off. We're not boyfriends or dating. We're just studying. That's it, Rugby said, coming back in with the younger brother and Tal. Lance, meet my three headaches, Rob, Tal, and Ray. Guys, this is Lance. Can you guys try to be good for an hour or two? We've got a lot of work to do. Two of the three brothers went into one of the bedrooms and played video games. Rob went into the living room and chatted on his phone. That's his girlfriend, Rugby said, and led me to the dining room. It held the remains of a lasagna and several slices of garlic bread. How long have they been together? I asked, trying to be polite. Two weeks. Have some lasagna if you want. I'm packing the rest for Mom's dinner when she finally gets home, Rugby said. I sat down at the table and placed a little lasagna on a plate and took some garlic bread. Rugby finished his food. Then we both cleaned up the table and the kitchen. We read through the syllabus and the online article, and the one text we had. We divided the reading in half. I did half, Rugby did half, and then we shared results with each other. Ray, the youngest brother, walked in and grabbed a glass of water and left. Ten minutes later, Tal walked in, grabbed one of the remaining garlic breads, and left. Rob stayed in the living room texting his girlfriend. There's a preview section of the other text on Amazon, Rugby said. It doesn't have all the pages we want, but some. Ten minutes later, Ray walked in, carrying a soccer ball. As he walked away, he whispered loudly, Tal, they're not. Plan B. No, they're not what, Rugby said. And what is plan B? I asked. Ray walked over to us and tossed the ball at Rugby. Time to juggle. Now? Rugby said. Yeah. Now, Tal said. What are they talking about? How do you juggle with one soccer ball? I asked. It's better if I do it outside, but... Rugby went into the living room and moved the coffee table over, made sure he had some room, and placed the ball between his feet. Are you showing off again? Rob said, and went into one of the bedrooms. You're just jealous, Tal yelled. Rugby kind of hopped, and the ball went into the air six feet, 
Then Rugby bent over and caught the ball in the middle of his back. Then he hopped again, caught the ball with one foot, bounced it from one foot to the other, then from knee to knee, from toe to alternate knee, then the other side, and finally he caught it in his left hand. Ta-da, he said. Lance, Rugby did such a good job that you want to kiss him, right? Tal said. Guys, Rugby said, we're not boyfriends. We only met today. Go back to your game. Just a little kiss, Tal begged, please. You owe me five dollars. Told you they wouldn't kiss tonight, Ray said. Lance and I are not boyfriends, Rugby said, pointing to one of the rooms. You two are going to bed. Now. When they were gone, Rugby turned to me. Sorry about that. What did they mean? I asked. Rugby sighed and shuffled a few papers. I'm gay, and they think I've invited my new boyfriend over, but I don't have time to have a boyfriend, and I have even less time because of Professor Sanders. I don't have time or money for a boyfriend either, I said. Ray peeked around the corner, smiling. I'm too busy taking care of these guys, Rugby said, got up and chased his younger brother back to one of the bedrooms. We met again Wednesday night. Rugby had bought two takeout pizzas, and we went over our notes and readings. Even without the other textbook, it was a lot. The second text didn't arrive until Thursday. On Friday morning, we met at the classroom. Professor Sanders handed us the test that didn't mean anything to our grades and told us to get to work. Only about half of the class was there. About two-thirds of the test came from the information we had studied. A third came from the text we never had a chance to study. Monday, we got the test back. I got a C-. minus. Rugby got a D plus. I am never going to get this, Rugby said. Yes, we are, and I think I know how, I said. I went up to our teacher. Professor Sanders, sir, since the test doesn't matter, why don't you let us fix up the test before next class and then regret it? Why would I want to do that, Professor Sanders, sir, said. How else are we going to get good at this stuff, Rugby said, rubbing his right shoulder. Bring it Wednesday, he said, and make sure you write all this up on the online review at the end of the semester. Rugby and I didn't miss a class. Two weeks in, we started meeting every day rather than three times a week. Only a few other people in the class took it serious too. We took every test and we did them and turned them back into the professor and he gave them back to us with notes on how we could improve. We wrote the extra essays and I don't know if we learned anything, but it gave me an excuse to visit Rugby. I liked hanging out with Rugby and his family. About four weeks in, on a Tuesday, I surprised Rugby and his brothers by bringing fried chicken from the fast food place down the street and all the side dishes that went with it. So when are you going to kiss my brother? It's been a month, Tal said. Guys, I told you, we're just studying, Rugby said. I think if they are so interested in what we're doing, let's make them study with us. I'm sure they have homework, I said. Did it already, Tal said, and then looked at the door. Somebody had inserted a key, and it was slowly opening. It was amazing how fast the conversation stopped, especially since a woman walked in who I had never seen. She wore a green waitress dress that said Saguaro Diner on the pocket and a name tag that said Linda Stout. Mom! You're home hours early, Ray said. I'm on break, she said. What smells so good? Is that chicken? I'm starving. You must be Lance, the boyfriend. I'm not the boyfriend. We're just studying, I said. Not according to Tal. It's smooch central when they've got their bags turned, she said, taking a seat at the table with us. Every time we walk in, they can't keep their hands off each other, Tal said. It's nothing like that, Rugby said and rubbed his right shoulder. Tal, I'm going to get even. We divided up the chicken and other food for the six of us, and for ten minutes we had a pleasant conversation about which band was best. Tell me the truth, Lance, she said, pushing her plate back and leaning on the table. Which one of these monsters is giving you the most trouble? I bet it's Ray. No, Mom, Ray said. Can I play video games now? Ray, you and Tal can go. Lance, give us five, she said. I need to talk to Rugby and Rob. What about, Rob said. I'll start dishes, I said to Rugby. Mrs. Dow nodded. This won't take long, Lance, and then you and Rugby can pull out the books. I wasn't that far away, and I heard every word. Rob, your science teacher, Mrs. Banks, call me right after I got to work, 
I guess there's been some problems. Would you tell me about them, please? Mrs. Stout said. There's no problems, Rob said, suddenly sitting straighter in his chair. It's just a stupid class and her assignments are stupid and I hate her. What's going on, Mom? Rugby said. According to Mrs. Banks, Rob is failing and has turned into the class clown. He's throwing things at the other kids, carving graffiti in the lab tables and won't stop talking. She says he's using his phone to text all the time. To who? Rugby said, rubbing his right shoulder. I think he was embarrassed. Let's find out. Give me your phone, Rob, Mrs. Stout said. No. Rob, don't make this hard because I have to get back to work. Give it to me and unlock it, she said. Whatever. Rob unlocked his phone and handed it over. Mrs. Stout thumbed through a couple of screens, checked on something, then put the phone in her pocket. How many texts do you send in a day? Good thing we have an unlimited family plan. But this is ridiculous. You can't take my phone away. I have to talk to my friends, Rob said. Your friends will survive a night without you, Mrs. Stout said, and wearily sighed. Rugby, I know you have a lot of things going on, but Mrs. Banks wants to meet at four tomorrow and I can't make it. Head management is coming for the annual visit, Mrs. Stout said. Can you take Rob to the meeting and see what she has to say? I'll make it up to you with Chinese takeout the day after. What about the boys? And Lance is coming over tomorrow night. I know it's a major imposition, and I'm sorry about this. Tal can watch Ray for an hour, and I think it's time he made dinner, she said, rising. Rob, skip the bus. I'm driving you to school tomorrow so we can have a nice long talk. Rugby, take notes and tell me everything that happens at the meeting. Will do, Rugby said. Mom, it's not fair. Rugby can have his boyfriend here, but I can't talk to my friends, Rob said. I almost said, we're not boyfriends, but now wasn't the time. I did roll my eyes and got back to the dishes. Lance, how old are you? Mrs. Stout asked. Twenty-two, same as rugby, I said. Rob, how old are you? Fifteen, he said. Seven years makes quite a difference. Thanks for the chicken, Lance. It was nice to finally meet you, she said as she left for the diner. Rob went to the living room, held an old couch cushion, and sulked. We're not boyfriends, I whispered to rugby. He shrugged and smiled. That's what I keep telling them, but I can't convince my family of that. Rugby and I cleaned up the kitchen and spread our books and laptops out on the table. About 15 minutes into reworking the latest test, Rugby blew a breath out and stared at me. I'm sorry you had to see this. Rob's always been halfway between an angel and a devil. I guess the devil side won this time. I'm nervous about seeing Mrs. Banks. You want some company? I asked. I would love some. What do you do with these kinds of things? Pick me up at 3.45? Wednesday afternoon, I drove over to the Stout's apartment and picked up Rugby. Rob is supposed to meet us at the school, Rugby said. Thanks for doing this. Later, how about we work on the essay that matters? I don't understand, Professor Sanders. Sir, I said. So many things that don't count for our grade. Why do only these two things count? If you ask him, you know what he'll say, Rugby said. Yeah, mention it in the online survey at the end of the course. We pulled up to the high school, visited the office, and they pointed us to Mrs. Banks' classroom. On the way, we passed an odd ceramic fountain with multiple pictures behind it. Cheerleaders, sports teams, athletes, student body officers, and a series of photos showing guys wearing minor costumes. I guess that was the school mascot. The miners were miners, Rugby said. What? I asked. A stupid joke, Rugby said. Is your picture up there? I asked. Rugby pointed at a team photo of a bunch of guys all in matching green and gold jerseys. Rugby knelt in the center, holding a soccer ball. Rugby rubbed his right shoulder, and the sad look came into his eyes. My senior year, I was captain of the soccer team. We took state. Best year of my life. We left and walked down a couple of corridors. I shouldn't be scared, Rugby whispered, and took hold of my hand. His hand was cold. I think we both glanced down at us holding hands. Sorry, I guess I'm really nervous, Rugby said, giving me an odd half smile. I don't mind, I said. Just remember, she can't be as scary as Professor Sanders, sir. Rugby gave a small chuckle. Mrs. Banks, ma'am? It doesn't sound as intimidating. 
Rob waited for us outside the classroom, leaning against the lockers. His eyes glanced at us holding hands and he looked away. He had a phone, but not the one he used to have. It was a simple flat rectangle with barely a screen. New phone? I asked. Rob scowled. It's stupid. Doesn't do anything. And Mom put it on the kid plan. No texting, no internet, no games. Mom won't even let me transfer phone numbers so I can talk to anybody. I hate Mrs. Banks. I hate Mom. I hate this school, he said, and jammed his phone in his pocket. That's too bad, Rob, said a woman in her mid-thirties, walking out of a classroom. She walked up to us and folded her arms. These must be your father's? They seem a little young. No. Is that you, Rugby? You're Rob's brother? My perfect brother, Rugby, and his perfect boyfriend, Lance, Rob sneered. I was about to correct him, but Rugby gave my hand a small squeeze. Instead, I smiled. It's good to see you again, Mrs. Banks, ma'am. Mom couldn't get out of work, so she sent us, Rugby said. Can you teach all my students to be that polite? It's good to see you. How's the shoulder? Mrs. Banks asked. Shoulder? I asked. It's fine. Tell us about Rob. Rugby glanced at me, then at the wall. The meeting lasted an hour, and we left with copies of all of Rob's missing assignments, all the handouts, and all the readings. Rob folded his arms and pouted the entire time. Rugby and I took the front seats in the car. Rob rode in back. I can't believe you fell that far behind. I know Mrs. Banks. Usually you can only make up two weeks of missing work, and she's letting you make up the entire semester, Rugby said. We'll have to make room at the table, I said. Rob still didn't say anything. When we got home, Tal had made spaghetti with microwaved meatballs and garlic toast, and for dessert he had popsicles. After dinner, Rugby and I went over drafts of the essay that counted and reviewed all the pages we had to read for the next session. Have you looked at the website yet? I asked. Been a little busy, Rugby said, slightly nodding at Rob. Rob sat at the table with us, his arms folded, and he stared at one of the worksheets. He wasn't reading or writing. You'll get more done if you actually pick up a pencil, I said. You're not my dad and you're not part of this family. Leave me alone, Rob yelled. Rob, Rugby said. Don't be a jerk, he's Rugby's boyfriend, Tal said, opening the freezer to get another popsicle. It's just homework. Mine only took 15 minutes, Ray said. Rugby, I freaking hate you for making me do all this. I hate your freaking boyfriend. I hate freaking mom. I hate my freaking family. I hate freaking Mrs. Bakes. I hate freaking school, Rob yelled. Rob used the F word, Ray said, his mouth opening into an O. You don't use that language around the boys, Rugby yelled. Rob, why are you mad? It's just a little homework, I said. Rob, you're out of line, Rugby said. If you don't get your work done, you'll fail science. That's a required class. You'll have to take it again, so get to work. Don't be a baby about it, Tal said. I know it's hard, but so is the class Rugby and I are taking. That's why we're teaming up to try and pass it, I said. You're picking on me. I don't care about your freaking tough class. And Lance, you're not part of this freaking family. Rugby gets to have his freaking boyfriend over. Tal and Ray play their freaking video games all the time. They get to hang out with their freaking friends. Mom takes my freaking phone away. Mom's going to be mad. Rob said the F word a lot, Ray said, a little giggle sneaking out. Stop swearing around Ray, Tal said. I looked at Rugby and asked, should I leave? No, he said. Rob, act like an adult. Even Ray is more grown up than you right now. And I'm only freaking eight, Ray said. Ray, don't use that word, Tal said. I don't care, Rob yelled. I'm not taking orders from a freaking washed up has been of a freaking loser for a freaking brother. I hate you. I hate you. You think you're so freaking perfect. You think you're so freaking smart. You think you're the freaking boss of this family. Rob, settle down, Tal said. No. Rugby thinks he's still a freaking athlete. I'm glad the freaking accident ruined him. Rugby, I freaking hate you. I hate all of you, Rob screamed. Rugby slightly shook his head, mouth flat and grim, and he stood. His right hand clenched into a fist, but he forced it to relax. Then his left hand rubbed his right shoulder. He turned and walked out the door. Rob, you are a loser, Tal said. Rob, I hate you too. I never want to see you again, Ray screamed and ran into his room, crying. Rugby has been taking care of you for most of your life, and this is how you treat him? He's been keeping your family together. Do you say thanks? No. Think on this. 
When rugby moves out, you'll have to do for Tal and Ray what rugby's been doing for all of you. It's time you manned up and stopped whining. You should apologize to everybody because you just destroyed your family. You've got one brother in the back room crying and the other one just walked out. Tal, go check on Ray. I'm going to check on rugby, I said, and followed rugby out the door. Lance is right. You broke our family. Rob, are you happy? I'm calling Mom, Tal screamed. I could hear him through the door. We're all we had, and you ruined it because Mom took your phone away, because you had to do your homework. You're a freaking... I found Rugby sitting on the bench not far from their unit. He was pale, but I don't think he was mad. I snuck up on him and took his hand. There's an ice cream store a couple of blocks away. Let's go for a walk. After a block, Rugby rubbed his right shoulder and said, It happened the last game of my senior year, the championship game. We won state, but I lost everything. What happened? I asked. The grass was wet. It hadn't been raining, so it might have been a sprinkler. Or maybe something spilled. I never found out. Halfway through the game, I had control of the ball, was about to kick it to one of my teammates, and my feet slid weird and I fell. I tried to catch myself with my right hand. That's the last time my arm was normal. I tore most of the ligaments in my shoulder. It wasn't a complete shoulder separation, but it sure hurt. What did they do? I had to wear a brace for three weeks until the swelling came down. Everybody else had graduation parties. Me? I had surgery, Rugby said, and pulled off his jersey. His right shoulder had a brace on it, with a strap around his chest to help hold it in place. Just a little behind his shoulder was a five-inch scar. The copays almost forced us on the streets. I was going to be on the college team. I had a scholarship, but I had to take a year of physical therapy, and the doctor wouldn't allow me to play for a long time. I'm sorry, I said. My arm mostly moves like it did before. I can't catch very well, and I can't lift it right. That's why I wear the bigger shirts. They're easier to get in and out of. Do you still have to wear the brace? I asked. Only when my shoulder bothers me, and carrying a pack irritates my shoulder, Rugby said and put his shirt back on. Are you okay? I said. Nobody knows how to hurt you like your family, Rugby said. I lost everything that meant anything to me. I lived for soccer. One moment I had it all, the next I lost a scholarship. College got delayed a couple of semesters. My family almost went broke. Coaches don't want damaged players who have trouble catching on their teams. Not when there are so many others to choose from. We bought ice cream, a vanilla fudge ripple for me, and a Mardi Gras fiesta for rugby. We went back to the complex and found a bench to sit on. We finished our ice cream and I placed a hand around rugby's shoulders. His lips were close. Something about his eyes spoke of need. The sad eyes were back. Rugby was hurting. Rob's words had struck deep and had ripped Rugby's soul open. I held him because if I were in his place, that's what I would want. Did Rugby start it? Did I? We kissed. Rugby's kiss was a lonely, desperate, hurting kiss that needed someone to care. We leaned our foreheads together and I whispered, I'm not going away. We hugged and held hands, then kissed again. I sat on his right and slowly massaged his shoulder. Rugby fumbled under his shirt and undid the brace and slid it off. We kissed, then I gently kneaded the muscles on his shoulder, his arm, and his upper back. Thank you, Rugby whispered. Sometimes I remember the way life used to be, or how it could have been. One accident destroyed my future and my dreams. I love my family. But sometimes I want something different. It's hard raising Rob and Tal and Ray. I love them, but I still have work and school. Ever since the accident, life is just hard. Then let me help, I said, and brushed my lips to his. A longer, softer kiss that I hope made Rugby smile. Even after the semester ends, I'm not going away. I think you're pretty incredible. Thanks he whispered, his voice wobbling a little, and we kissed. A beautiful, gentle thing that promised more. A lot more. I think you're amazing too, he sniffed. Thanks for helping me this semester. They're finally kissing, Ray said, now smiling. It only took a month, Tal said, his voice a little hoarse from all his screaming. Did you just get ice cream? I want ice cream, Ray said, 
At least I have two nice brothers. Does Rugby's boyfriend count as a brother or a friend? That would make it three nice brothers. Or is it two nice brothers and a friend? Is there such a thing as... Drop it. You're thinking too much, Tal said. Sorry about leaving you guys, I said, still holding Rugby's hand. We needed a minute. What are you doing here, Rugby said. Mom wanted us to come get you, but I think she really wanted us out of the apartment so she could yell at Rob, Tal said. Rob's going to be in serious trouble. He said the F word, Ray said. So did you, Tal said. Don't tell her, okay, Ray said. Rugby, let's go get your brother some ice cream and we'll split another cone between us. I'll buy, I said. They're having a date, Ray said. Rugby smiled and took my hand. I guess we are boyfriends now. I knew it, Tal said. When we got back to the apartment, Rob sat at a corner of the table working on a worksheet. Mrs. Stout sighed as we walked in. Rob, what do you say? In a deadpan, slightly surly monotone, Rob said, I'm sorry for yelling, I'm sorry for swearing, and I don't hate any of you, and thank you Rugby and Lance for coming to see my teacher and getting my work. I promised to get my homework done, and I'm sorry Mom for making you leave work. Better? We came to an agreement. Once he gets caught up and gets all his grades to a B, Rob can have his phone back, Mrs. Stout said. You left work again? Won't they get mad? Rugby asked. My boss was annoyed, but understood. The people we had to look good for left at six, but I'll have to work an extra hour or more for this, Mrs. Stout said. Guess what? We finally caught Rugby and Lance kissing, Ray yelled. Epilogue. How can this be so hard? Somebody muttered as Professor Sanders, sir, passed out the final. Thirty tough questions. All essay. It should have been a nightmare. Rugby and I glanced at each other and smiled. So did the other students who had been to all the classes with us. There was ten of us who stuck with Professor Sanders, sir, through every class, which meant about eighty showed up only for the essay and the final. Every question on the final... We had slaved for the last 15 weeks finding the answers to them and making them perfect. We had seen every question before, or something similar, either on the weekly tests or the bi-weekly essays. The people who had come to class regularly already knew the answers. I didn't feel sorry for everybody who skipped out of the work. As we handed our papers in, we were first, of course. Rugby and I kissed in front of Professor Sanders, sir, and the whole class. Good luck to you, Professor Sanders, sir, said. If you two get married, send me an invite. It's been a pleasure working with you. We sailed out of there with an A on the final and an A in the class. The online survey of the class? I'm sure everybody wrote volumes about how tough of a teacher he was. Rugby wrote, nicest teacher I've ever met. I wrote one sentence as well. Thanks to Professor Sanders, sir, I met my boyfriend. Even though we didn't have homework, we had to make sure Rob did his. We went back to the stout apartment and Tal made dinner. Something high class. A tortellini casserole and garlic toast. Give the kid a break. It was only a bag of frozen tortellini, a bag of frozen vegetables, and a jar of spaghetti sauce. But that's pretty fancy for us guys. As we started dishes, I couldn't help but slightly kiss Rugby's very kissable lips. They're kissing again, Ray yelled from around the corner. Thanks, friends. I hope you enjoyed. We'll see you next time. Peace.